Good morning and welcome to Lakeside Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you have chosen to worship God with us this morning. I have a brief announcement before I get started. On Thursday evening, Christmas Eve, we had our candlelight service and it was a beautiful service. And if you'd like to still see it, you can go to our website. That's lakesidepcsf. Dot org. I hope you'll get a chance to see it. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, as we gather together this morning to worship you, we're so grateful to you for your goodness, your love, your faithfulness, for you sending your son into the world as a baby to live and die and rise from the dead to forgive us of our sins and to give us eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us now, and I invite your Holy Spirit to come upon each one of us and to do the great work that you do to make us more like Jesus. We pray all this in his holy name. Amen. The call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. You wrap yourself in light as a garment. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Let us all praise the Lord.
confident in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. On this, the third day of Christmas, as another year draws to a close, we come together before God and with one another, confessing the ways in which we have been caught up in the frenzied spirit of the holidays and turned away from your spirit of peace, the times we have focused so much on our own lives and desires that we have neglected the voices of your children who cry out for justice. In our focus on making the season perfect, we have turned away from the hurting people and broken places in our world in need of healing. In the times we have dismissed Christmas as a time only for children, and we have stubbornly closed our hearts to your amazing gift of love. O holy child of Bethlehem, word become flesh, our Savior and King, hear us as we humbly pray, cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Let us take a moment to offer our sincere confession. Hear the good news of Christmas. Today God reveals to us the wonders of divine love for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Friends, we are forgiven. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 35. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and a glory for your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to the mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. Just as a reminder, today is the third day of Christmas. If we were to sing the Christmas song, the 12 days of Christmas, today would sound something like this. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Just trying to keep the Christmas spirit going. Christmas Eve, we celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who reigns over all creation. The question I'm asking this morning is, well, Jesus is born now, what's next? Please join me in prayer. Lord, as we open up your scriptures and try to understand, Lord, this wonderful story of Mary and Joseph, baby Jesus and Simeon, Lord, we pray for your spirit to be upon us, to open up our hearts and our minds to what the word would say to us today. Please anoint me, Lord, and fill me with your spirit and give me the right words to speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This gospel reading this morning that you just heard tells us what Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus did after Jesus was born. On the eighth day, Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. The Jewish religion requires that all Jewish boys be circumcised and named on the eighth day. Circumcision symbolized the Jews' separation from the Gentiles and also symbolized the unique relationship that the Jews had with God. This ceremony was an important ritual for families because they were obeying God's law. And as the law said in verse 23, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. When Mary and Jesus brought Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to be dedicated to God, they met an old godly man. His name is Simeon, who prophesied about what this child would become. Simeon said that Jesus is the Messiah and that he would be light to the entire world. But what would that look like? A few years ago, Michael Frost, an Australian missiologist and theologian, met with a group in, here in the Bay Area, a group of mission leaders, which I was invited to, and Michael Frost decided that he wanted to explain to us in a new and exciting way how Jesus is the light in the world. He gave an illustration of a home big home, and in this home, it was all windows, and the windows had been painted black, and outside this window, windowed house, was the light of Christ, the glory of God, and it shined on everything, but unfortunately, because the windowed house was painted black on the inside, the people that were inside the home couldn't see the light. And the people inside the home are the peoples of the world. What he was saying is that the world lives in darkness. Well, one day, there was a young man in this home who decided he wanted to see what was beyond the windows, beyond the home. And so he reached and he found a cloth and he wiped clean one of the window panes. And as he did so, a ray came through from the light of the world and shined upon him. And as it did so, he found that his heart began 
to soften, that his mind and emotions and will were being transformed into what the light of the world was like. He saw things differently. Everything had changed for him. He saw himself differently. He saw the people around him differently. But most importantly, he saw God differently. As he embraced the light of the world, he found that he was filled with Jesus' love and joy and peace. This young man was so excited about what he had found that he wanted to tell somebody else. So there was a young lady sitting next to him or standing next to him, and, and he told her about what had happened to him and asked if she would like to know, and she was ready. And, and he said, well, all you need is a cloth and just wipe the black paint off the window pane. She followed his instructions, and the light of the world shined on her, and she experienced very similarly what the young man had experienced. And she wanted to tell somebody, so she told the person next to her, who told the person next to him, who told the person next to her. Well, unfortunately, not everybody wanted to see the light. There were many people who were content living in darkness. You see, the point that Michael Frost was making is that we live in a dark world. And those who live in darkness need those who live in the light to help them see King Jesus, the light of the world. Because only King Jesus can transform lives. Jesus, the light of the world, was born in, in Bethlehem and changed everything. In other words, Christmas changes the world. First, we're called by scripture to a personal transformation. Romans 12, 2 tells us this. Do not be conformed any longer by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Jesus transforms us not just for ourselves, but in order to transform the world around us. The story is told of a man who was reading the paper while his children were in bed. Much to his chagrin, his youngest daughter came into the kitchen and said to her dad, Dad, I can't sleep. Well, dad told her to go back to bed, and she started to cry. So he conceived a, a plan. In the paper he was reading, he saw a picture of the world in it. So he got some scissors, he cut out the world, cut it into pieces, got some tape, gave the pieces and the tape to his daughter, said, I want you to go into the dining room, and I want you to put the world back together. So his daughter obediently went into the dining room and started working on the world. So for the dad, this was an opportunity for him to drink his coffee and read a little bit more of the paper. He took a couple of sips before he saw his daughter bounding into the kitchen. And he was amazed that she could put this world back together so fast. So she says, See, sweetie, how did you do that so fast? And she said, Dad, it was easy. On the back side of the page was the picture of a man. When you make the man right, you make the world right. That man is Jesus. And the people he has transformed transform the rest of the world. Pastor Rodney Buchanan tells us that Christmas is more than just having your sins forgiven 
and going to heaven. It's about being transformed by the grace and love of God. We become a new person and are truly changed. In turn, you begin to change the world. See, the culture is not just to be influenced, but begins to be changed as changed individuals live in it, participate in it, and rub shoulders with others in it. Here's how Jesus saw it. He says, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Matthew chapter 5. You see, the world is our mission field. Our culture is our mission field. Our neighborhoods are our mission field. Our work, our school is our mission field. Let the light of Christ in you shine on others so that their darkness that they live in will be replaced with the light in the world. And that is Jesus. So how do we live by the light of Christ? Do good deeds. You see, the church consists of followers of Jesus Christ. And we need to be known for doing good deeds. We should be doing good deeds every day, serving and helping other people as an example to others of who Jesus is. Give a, a cup of water to someone who is thirsty. Share your life with them, how Jesus loved you and how Jesus changed you. Share with people your time. Practice hospitality. Ask God to shine the light of Christ in you so brightly and through you so brightly so that the people will seek God, reach out to God, and find him. Then their darkness can be transformed to light. Please join me in prayer. Lord, as we heard the story of Simeon and his prophecy about the Christ child, that he would be the light of the world, we're thankful, Lord, that that light of the world was not just for that period of time, but that the light of the world, Christ, can live within us that our lives have been transformed by the light of the world so that we can be a part of your transformation of this world. Help us as your church to do good deeds, to let those good deeds shine out to all people and that we can point them to the one who is the light of the world and can change their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
great and merciful God, we have so much for which to thank you. The year 2020 is drawing to a close, and many will say good riddance, but still there have been bright spots and blessings. We thank you for the COVID vaccine, which many had feared we would not see in our lifetime, and which we now hope will save countless lives. Even though we have been on lockdown for many months, there has been many a saving grace. In many cases, we've been able to spend precious time with family and friends, either in person or by electronic means. Sometimes our children have come home to help us or for us to help them. It has given us the chance to know them as individuals and to learn that they are not babies anymore. There have been some really rough spots, serious illness, and even deaths, but we have adjusted, as we always do, with your help. Our church has been on lockdown, but we have learned that your work need not be bound by walls and that we can reach out to others, helping them with simple acts of kindness or significant material assistance. We have loved one another. Please help us to continue to stay quietly in our homes, wear a mask, wash our hands, and be mindful of the welfare of others till we come out victorious on the other side. We thank you, Lord, for all our blessings, but most of all, we thank you for the gift of your only Son. And now we pray the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When blossoms fly me the snows upon a winter night was born a child, the Christmas rose, the King of Love and Light. The angels sang, the shepherds sang, the great earth rejoiced. And at his blessed birth, the stars, their exultation
We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning, the first Sunday after Christmas. I'd like to leave you with a blessing. Jesus is the light of the world. And when we let his light shine upon us and we welcome it into our hearts, he will transform us. He will change us into someone better. Someone that will be very similar to him. So my challenge to you and to myself over this next week is will you let the light of the world shine in you and through you to the world around you? Go in his love, his joy, and his peace.